Welcome everyone. Today I am so excited to be sharing a super fun collaboration with you all. A bunch of amazing doll artists teamed up to create a Magical Girl collab for us to share with you. We each came up with our own original character with special powers and unique designs, including all the things we love about Magical Girls. It was so wonderful to work with all these other artists, so make sure you check out their dolls and their videos. I'll leave a link to all of them in the description below. For my Magical Girl, I started off with a Melody Piper from the Ever After High range. I love her sculpt, especially her high cheekbones and cute nose. She also has a gorgeous warm skin tone, which I think will contrast really beautifully with the design I have in mind for her. The original Magical Girls were witches, and so I wanted to give her an old worldy, witchy, almost warlock vibe. I loved the character of Merlin as a child, so I wanted to bring that kind of energy to her design. I prep her as usual, removing her hair and taking off her factory makeup with 100% pure acetone. I prepare her scalp for hair by painting it a pastel icy blue shade. I'm going to be rerouting this doll today so it's always good to prepare the head with a layer of paint. I have this beautiful shiny blue acrylic yarn, which I will turn into hair to reroot with. I will also be adding in some gray and white yarn to try and create the feeling of an old and wise wizard, even though she's going to look young. I feel like in the universe this character is in, you don't go gray from getting old, you go gray from being smart and brave. I reroute her as normal, using my rerouting tool to plunge the acrylic fibres into her scalp. Once her head is full, I add some tacky glue through her neck hole to lock it all in place. I pin her hair up and out of the way so that I can start her face up. The Melody doll has beautiful almond eyes sculpted onto her, which I almost was going to use as a guide but since the magical girl has such a strong connection with anime, I wanted to change the shape slightly to make her more cartoonish. So I curve the outside of her eye a little more and draw the waterline below where it's sculpted on her to make her eyes larger. I took my time tracing out the second eye to make sure that both sides matched and that my pencil lines and her sculpt existed together harmoniously and nothing looked too lumpy or bumpy. I add some gold micro glitter to her face to start enhancing her complexion. I really wanted a strong contrast between the cool blues of her hair and eyes and the warm golden tones in her skin. So I add this gold highlight many times throughout the face to help it build up. I sketch in her iris with my blue pencils and start building up a gradient. I also fill in the whites of her eyes and continue building up as much pigment as I can before I'll have to seal it in with a layer of Mr. Super Clear. I use my chalk pastels to start adding contours to her face. I love this sculpt so much, she's one of the most severe of the Ever After High line, so I really wanted to make the most of it and chisel out some of those features. To keep her skin looking lovely and warm, I add orangey peachy blush to her cheeks as well as a little around her eyes and on her forehead. I also add some soft peachy colour to her lips. To lay out the shape of her eyebrows, I use a light blue pan pastel and a small fluffy brush. And then go in with my kneaded eraser to refine it until it's the perfect shape. 
Using a super sharp black pencil, this one is a Caran d'Ache super color, I start drawing in her eyelashes. I wanted to give her a little anime aesthetic while still staying close to my usual vibe. So you'll see I barely give her a pupil and keep most of the face pretty graphic. With the lashes mapped out, I also draw in the individual hairs on her eyebrows. I use different shades of white and blue to add depth and visual interest. I mix grey and blue pastel together and add it to the top half of her eye to create a shadow and add dimension to it. I add little white highlights around her face to let her natural high points pop out even more. I love the contrast it brings to her face, while also adding an interesting illustrative element. I also draw in the catch lights on her eyes. I wanted this to be pretty graphic, so I go with one long line and a couple of dots. Then, using white acrylic paint, I enhance all of my white pencil work to make it super opaque. I add a final dusting of gold shine to her cheeks, and using a damp brush, I apply an extra heavy coat of it to her eyelids. And with that, the face is done. I imagine this girl existing in a kind of Tudor or Renaissance style universe, where she's at war with some dark spirits or fairies. To create this witchy warrior look, I start to create some armour for her. Using Warbler Thermoplastic, I cut out a shape from a pattern I made from paper, then use a heat gun to shape it around the doll's body. I first make her a greave, which is armour for your shins, so I add some masking tape to that area so the Warbler won't stick, and start to shape it. I start building around the greave so that the piece of armour continues up over her knee and onto her thigh. Warbler sticks to itself when it's heated up, so I don't have to use any glue in this part of the creation, which is really nice and tidy. I also make her a chest plate, a pauldron, which is a shoulder piece, and a fold, which is a piece which protects the hip. Besides the chest plate, I make the armour for just one side of her body. I think it makes for a visually interesting design for it to be asymmetrical, but I also plan for her to wield a huge staff, so I kept one side free of armour so that she could use her weapon more freely. I also made all her armour for her right side so she could be left handed like me. Once I have all the pieces made, 
I give them a coat of UV resin. This serves two purposes. Firstly, it creates a really smooth texture, opposed to the warbler which is a little bumpy. And secondly, it allows a very easy application of the mica pigment I will use to turn these pieces gold. I cure the resin under my UV lamp, and then use a sponge tip applicator to rub the gold mica powder all over the armour. This technique creates a super metallic finish without having to worry about the brush marks you would get from using paint. The use of resin also reinforces the warbler pieces, which will make them super durable. I think the final result is really cool and extra shiny, which I think is incredibly important for a magical girl. With the armour done, I start creating the fabric elements of her outfit. I start with a piece of navy velvet to make a little skirt. I hem the piece with glue, which I recommend when working with velvet, to prevent the little buckles that sewing thread can give. I decide to decorate her skirt with these tiny gold stars. In my mind, the most cliché idea of a wizard outfit is navy with gold stars. So I wanted to use these elements, but use them in a new way. I glue down the stars in a grid pattern, trying to evoke the feeling of a quilted fabric, without actually using that technique. The quilting would give the fabric too much body for it to drape properly in a miniature form. A few hours later, the stars are all attached, and I can gather the skirt and sew it to the waistband. I also attach some gold loops to each end of the skirt, which I will use to close the garment with gold chain. I wanted to give her big puffy sleeves to add to her old worldy look, so I draft up some pattern pieces. To the puffy shoulder piece, I also add the same stars in a grid pattern. I gather both the top and bottom ends of the shoulder piece, and then attach it to the lower forearm piece, and to a band that will go around the top of her shoulder. Then I fold the whole thing in half with the good side facing in, and sew along the length of the arm. I then flip the whole thing right side out to reveal the finished sleeve. I decide to give her some white bloomers to sit under her skirt. Lots of magical girls have huge fluffy skirts with lots of layers, and I wanted to give that feeling and the same silhouette, but I didn't think a warrior warlock character would be able to fight in all those skirt layers, so I give her these little shorts instead. I trim the bottom of the bloomers with white velvet to tie it in with the rest of her outfit. To create some fierce thigh-high boots, I take a pattern for a pair of stockings and modify it slightly. I sew up the length of the boot and then turn it right side out. I have these 3D printed shoe bases. I bought the file from Moonlight Jewel's wonderful book, I totally recommend it. I give them the same treatment as the armour, a layer of UV resin and then the gold mica pigment. And then I glue the shoe base to the velvet uppers. I wanted to give her a cape. I wanted to give her a cape, but I didn't want it to look too heavy or cumbersome. So instead of hemming the edges, I pass them over a flame to stop them from fraying. I then take these tiny gold tassels and split open the jump rings with a pair of pliers. I hook the jump rings across the end of the cape and then close the rings again, piercing the fabric and securing them in place.
I attach them evenly across the entire width of the bottom edge, and I love the cute and mystical look it gives. I then quickly gather up the top end of the cape using a running stitch, and then use my favourite fabric glue to attach the cape to the inside of the shoulder pauldron. I decide to give her a hat inspired by menswear from the Tudor period. I create a circle from Warbler and add an edge that slightly slopes diagonally inwards. I prepare the fabric that I'll use to cover the Warbler, as well as another gold tassel on a length of thin navy ribbon. I thread the tassel and the ribbon through the centre of the fabric, and then cover both the fabric and the Warbler with spray adhesive. I line up the ribbon with the centre of the hat and then press the pieces together to glue them. I trim away the excess fabric and then spray more adhesive to the bottom side of the hat so that I can finish covering it in the fabric. So that I may attach it to the doll, I use UV resin to glue in a pin, which will be able to pierce the doll head and hold it in place. To create her magical staff, I first take this clear rod, which is actually from a broken doll stand. I cover it in UV resin and hold it under my lamp to cure. I take these iridescent chameleon nail flakes, which are yellow but have a brilliant blue-violet shift, and use a sponge tip applicator to cover the length of the staff. I wanted to pay tribute to the iconic Sailor Moon in some way, and I thought it would be a cute idea to make my doll staff look like Moonstone. Moonstone comes in a few different colours, but my favourite is definitely the type that looks like a creamy yellow, but reflects blue in the light. Not only does this match my blue and gold colour scheme perfectly, but I like the subtle nod to Sailor Moon by using a Moonstone. I create an imitation moonstone crystal by firstly coating this resin mould in the same chameleon flakes. I mix up some two-part epoxy resin and then add in a ton of the flakes. I also have some cellophane with the same yellow-blue shift, so I cut up some little strips of that to add in as well. I'm adding in everything I can to make it as shiny and magical as possible. I slowly pour in the resin in stages, adding extra flakes and cellophane as I go, and then leave it overnight to cure. And oh my gosh, it's even better than I had hoped. I absolutely adore it. It looks completely yellow when it's out of the light or backlit, but shines a vibrant blue-violet when it catches the light. A perfect magic crystal for a magic staff. To decorate the staff, and also to attach the two pieces together, I create an organic swirly design out of the scrap warbler I had left over from the armour. I don't want to waste anything. I use masking tape over the resin pieces to stop the warbler from sticking, and build up the design slowly, gradually adding more heat and more warbler to create all the swirls. To make them match, I give them the same resin and mica pigment treatment, and then glue all the pieces together using a very strong two-part epoxy glue. And with that she's all done. Please don't forget to like and share this video, it really helps me to grow this channel and share my art with all of you. And definitely watch the rest of the videos in this collab, everyone did such an incredible job. The other channels in the collab are Moonlight Jewel, Enchantarium, The Dolly Geek, Hextian, and Kira's Workshop. I want to thank all the amazing artists in this collab. This was a super fun project.
Thanks so much for watching. Your support means so much to me. Let me know what you think of her in the comments. I love hearing all your feedback. Also, make sure to find me on Instagram, where you can adopt one of my dolls, or commission me to create a one-of-a-kind creation for you. I'll see you in the next video. Have an awesome day!